So Case Western Reserve ready to bounce back here, trying to get back to the form they were at earlier in the year. They start off the year 4-0, the setback last weekend. And now Robertson Albrecht trying to kick off the second half of the season. Albrecht's kick from the 35 will be fielded by Nowicki at about the 4. Cuts up field, back to the middle of the field, and he's tackled there by Munyaradzi Mangwendi. Right at about the 21-yard line, and that's where St. Vincent will begin play today. So Case Western Reserve University, defense is out there. For the second straight week, we'll see Michael Amadio get the start for Travis Johnston. Johnston, who had played extremely well this year, but battling an injury. Also a cornerback, it looks like we'll see Nick Kadlesic get the start at the near cornerback side instead of Kevin Chrisis. So a few changes from the depth chart here. First play from game pass deep down the field, and it is batted loose. Thompson tried to throw it down looking for the receiver on the play. That was Shaquille Edmond, the intended receiver, and Patrick Crossy was there to break it up. And so it'll be second down and 10. 21-yard line for St. Vincent. Patrick Crossy, the veteran defensive back, got his hand in the middle of that one. Thompson back, shotgun snap, three wide receivers set right. One to the left and one running back. The running back will be Stasco, the sophomore talented runner. He's been the best offensive player this year for St. Vincent. Another pass, this one in the flat, caught on the near side by Kalp. And Keith Kalp takes it up to about the 24-yard line where he's taken down. And that will set up a third down and about six yards. They'll call it third and seven. St. Vincent needs to get to the 31-yard line. Two wide receivers spread on each side. Sasko in the backfield. Thompson gets it. He passes off to Stasco. Amadio a chance to tackle him short of the marker. He evades Amadio, and Stasco will get all the way up to the 31-yard line. This will be close, and they will call it a first down. The nose of the football might have just got him past that first down marker. And St. Vincent with a seven-yard pass from Thompson out to Stasco for the first down. No huddle offense here for the Bearcats. Ron Dulciato, the head coach of St. Vincent. Two coaches that are very familiar with each other. Both with John Carroll roots. Coach Deblack, an 88 graduate of Carroll. Coach Dulciato, a 1990 graduate. Both were on that coaching staff together as well. And it looks like the play clock Delay expired on that. Number 10, offense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. And so that will be a delay of game and cost five yards for the Bearcats here. It'll be a first down and 15 as the ball moves back to their own 26-yard line. Now three wide receivers set right, one to the left. Shotgun snap. Play action, pass over the middle, and it's dropped. Shaquille Edmond, the intended receiver, couldn't hold on to it. He was wide open on the play action there. But it falls in harmlessly, and that will bring up a second down and 15. Well, it's a no huddle offense for St. Vincent College, but certainly not a hurry up offense. They don't huddle, but they take their time to set that play. Not all that dissimilar from what Case Western Reserve has done this year as well. Thompson under center. Actually now back in the shotgun. Looks like the pass rush might be coming here for the Spartans. Victor snuck up on the line as the pass comes off to the near side. 
Catch is made by Kalp, his second grab of the game. Takes it out to the 36 before he's knocked out of bounds by Colin Schuster, the freshman cornerback. They'll get to the 36, and that will set up a third down and five for St. Vincent. Twelve thirty to play in the first quarter. St. Vincent trying to convert their second first down of the opening drive. Snap back to Thompson. Thompson looks right, and he's sacked from behind. Sack on the play by Brian Victor, who's been blitzing on each of the last two plays. And Victor that time able to cut his way in, come up on Thompson's blind side, and take him down for the sack. And that will force a punt here for St. Vincent. It'll be a loss of eight on the play, bringing up a fourth down and 13. Ball at the 28-yard line. Back to punt for St. Vincent is Christian Witchie. Back to receive is Robina, who calls everyone off on the short punt. It'll roll dead at the 45-yard line for Case Western Reserve, and that's where the first possession for the Spartans will begin. So a short punt there. And now Case Western Reserve will start things off behind freshman quarterback Drew Saxton, who will go five wide to start the game. Saxton looks over at the sideline, gets the signs here. It'll be Robina, DeFrancesco, and Morgan to his right. He'll look left, and there he finds the receiver on the far side. And that will be Adam Zibko, the tight end, junior, out of Illinois. And right back to the line, go to the Spartans, go the Spartans in that five wide set once again. Pick up a six on the play right at the 49 yard line. Saxton looks out to the sideline. Three to his right, two to his left. Takes the snap, will throw to the left again. Once again looking for Zipco, but Zipco unable to pull that one in. And that will bring up a third down and four for Case Western Reserve. Running back comes in now to flank Saxton. That appears to be Sam Jenkins. Three wide receivers now to the right. Saxton pulls up. Jenkins in motion. Saxton rolls to his right. Throws off to Morgan, his new favorite target. Morgan carries it past the 40 for a first down, but a fumble on the play. And let's see who pulls that one in. The ball is loose. St. Vincent players signaling that they have it. We'll see who comes out with it on the bottom of the pile. And no signal yet. As you take another look, in case Western Reserve will keep possession. The catch was made by Morgan. He had 13 of those last week, and off to a quick start here. Ball was poked out on the play by Antoine Battle. But fortunately, looked like Mario Rabina on the bottom of that pile came away with the ball. And so that will be a first and 10 ball, the St. Vincent 38-yard line. Colton Morgan, the lone receiver on the right side in isolation. One-on-one -on -one there. We'll see if they try to double-team him. They won't as the ball goes out on the flat far side. Robina, he's got speed, tries to work back to the line of scrimmage. He fumbles. It goes out of bounds. And possession will stay with the Spartans once again. That will go as a one-yard loss, on bring up a second a 11. Fumble out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the spot. Fumble, second down. So again, you hear the ruling on the field there, a forward fumble, which means that the ball is placed at the spot of the fumble. So they'll call that the 40-yard line. Second down and 11 coming up. Jenkins stays in his lone tailback. Second 
Snap comes. The snap is bobbled, and Saxon just dives on top of it. Well, a little bit wet outside. It rained earlier, and I think we're seeing some of that here early for the Spartans, who have had trouble holding on to the ball the last three plays. So... The snap is fumbled, and that will bring up a third and long. Third down and 19 moves them back to the 48-yard line. Case Western Reserve needs to get to the 29 to get a first down here. Pass comes. Saxton rolls right. He throws deep down the sideline. Has a man there. It's Stefanski. But... The throw is a little short, and that will bring up a fourth down and bring on the punt team for the Spartans. Nate Stefanski, the freshman running back, spread out wide as a receiver. Saxton, who throws a great ball, just didn't quite get enough on that, and Stefanski coming down the sideline was double teamed. May have had a move if he had moved slightly more inside to go get that, but again, I think maybe his shade underthrown as well by Saxton there. Tough throw to make in this weather. That'll bring Chase Witte back to punt it for Case Western Reserve. Sam DeWicke back to return the punt. He will take it right in front of his 10-yard line, and he swarmed there, escapes the pack, and now has a chance to return it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line, where he's finally brought down by Patrick Crossy and Nick Kadlesic. And the 22 is where St. Vincent will begin their second drive of the game. Well, special teams were a bit of an issue for Case Western Reserve last week. The Spartans struggled to prevent the W&J return game, especially on kickoff returns. And early on here, a chance to maybe plant St. Vincent deep back in their own zone. And instead, they're able to take it out to their 21-yard line. 22 make that. Thompson begins his second drive, looks to pass on first down. He's swarmed, tries to escape the pressure, and does. He'll roll out to the 25, looking to get to the 30. Stop just short as he's chased out of bounds at the 29-yard line, bringing up second down. 8.39 to play in the first half. First quarter, I should say. Scoreless between St. Vincent and Case Western Reserve. Thompson from the shotgun. Three wide receivers right, one to the left. Stasco behind him. Throw comes over the middle, wide open, and making the catch for the first down will be Philip Harding. Harding takes it to the 41 yard line before he's tackled. And so first and 10 from the Case Western Reserve 41-yard line. Now a two-back set for the first time today. Interesting look here for St. Vince's. They roll a third player into the backfield. The handoff goes to Stasco, and he'll carry forward on his first rushing attempt of the day just past the 47-yard line. Bring up a second down and four, gain of six there for Stasco. For Case Western Reserve, defensive line. It'll be Cameron Brown, Tyler Bushman on the ends, Big Ian Henderson in the middle. Linebackers today, Brian Victor, Isaac Withrow, Michael Amadio. As the handoff comes to the middle of the field, stopped and taken down. Smith came up to make the tackle. I believe Malik Wells on the carry there. Pardon me, that was uh, Tacoa Gatis who had the carry there. One of the backup quarterbacks for this team as well. Gatis had a carry on that one. Defense, 
So that'll bring up a third down and short, third down and two from the 49-yard line. Thompson looks over to the sideline. Now we'll step back. Thompson goes to throw. He completes the pass. And we'll carry it just past the 40 into Spartan, Sp Spartan territory up to the 39-yard line. Catch made by Sam Nowicki. And he'll quickly check out of the game. So St. Vincent has moved the ball early on here. Second drive now, they've been able to move the ball up the field. Pass midfield marker for the first time today. Penalties cost them a bit on their first drive of the game. A delay of game and then a sack, actually. Again, that three-man in the backfield set. Handoff comes Stasco again. He's wrestled down by a trio of Spartans. Looked like Withrow and Crossy in the middle of that. Ball up to the 38-yard line. Gain of one on the play. Second and nine upcoming. Take a look at our fans here for homecoming. A nice crowd here at Case Western Reserve today as fans are braving what has been probably the coldest day of the year so far, which here in Cleveland isn't saying so much in the mid-40s. Colder weather is coming shortly, I'm sure. But a hearty group of fans making their way out today. This is Gatiss. He's looking to throw and fumbles the football. An interesting play there. Possession will stay with St. Vincent, but Gatiss, the backup quarterback and running back, takes the handoff and was looking to throw, but Smith got into the backfield, broke it up. Gatiss fell back on top of it, and that will move the ball back to the 47-yard line. It'll be third down and 18 to go. First down marker is at the 29. So a long way to go here for St. Vincent. Although at midfield, depending on how aggressive they want to be, this could be two down territory. Case Western Reserve secondary will play off the receivers. Thompson looking to throw. He's being rushed by Cam Brown. Brown coming up from behind and swallows him up at the 50 yard line. Another sack on the play. Cameron Brown, the senior defensive end. Leading the team in sacks this season and gets another one there, taking down the quarterback from behind, Thompson, and setting up a third down Personal and very foul. long. Face mask, defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Well, and a face mask called there, as you hear, the flag came at the end of the play, and that will cost Case Western Reserve the Defensive stand there. And we'll also wipe away the sack, I believe. And we'll set up a first down and 10. From the 36 yard line. Nice look at our fans over there on the porch. At the Wyant Athletic Center. Watching the game underneath the shade today. First down, throw over the middle, caught. Pass caught by number 11, Ariel Martinez, who carries it down right about to the first down marker there. And in fact, it will be a first down for St. Vincent. So another first down for St. Vincent. The Bearcats driving. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. The Bearcats threatening early in this one. 2.53 to play in the first quarter. A lot of time-eating drives early on here for the Bearcats, but a fumble and diving on top of it are the Spartans. A botched exchange on the handoff, and that's Cam Brown who recovers the fumble. Well, that was easy for Cam Brown, right place, right time. After he thought he was going to force a turnover on downs earlier in the drive after a sack. Instead, 
Recovers that fumble, and he'll head back to the sideline now as Case Western Reserve's defense, or offense, I should say, will get their second shot of the day. Saxton lines up at quarterback, has three to his right, one to his left. Running back in the backfield is Jenkins. Jenkins in motion, comes alongside Saxton, who looks to throw. He throws out in front, nice slant move by DeFrancesco, who comes forward and takes it past the 50 into St. Vincent territory for a first down. Francesco, DeFrancesco came open over the middle. A really well-run route. That's a veteran maneuver there by DeFrancesco who's coming off one of the best games of his career. That one spread to the outside, coming out of the backfield and making the catch is Robina before he's taken down along the sideline at the 42-yard line, gain of seven for the Spartans on that play. We'll call it the 43, and so it'll be a second down and four. Morgan lined up along the near side here. And he's going to, the well, throw comes, it's going to be DeFrancesco. And DeFrancesco with his second catch of the drive carries it out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Another first down for Case Western Reserve. Under two minutes left here in the first quarter. Handoff, first handoff of the day for the Spartans. It's Sam Jenkins carrying it upfield, but he fumbles. And recovered by St. Vincent. That will be at the 17-yard line, and the sloppy play continues for both teams. Jenkins was stripped from behind. Looks like George Hillen was able to yank that one out. And another turnover. Both teams really struggling to hold on to the ball here early on. That is the second turnover we've seen today, but a number of fumbles in the game. And a little bit of a slow start for both squads. They have struggled to hold on to the ball today. Again, it's a little wet outside, but you wouldn't think that it's wet enough that you'd be having these kinds of issues. Rained heavy earlier on in the day, and that certainly had an effect in the game, though. Pass deep down the sideline by Thompson. Kadlesic there, and the throw goes over the head of the receiver. And it will go for an incomplete pass. Kadlesic on the coverage. That was Aaron Austin, the intended receiver on the play. Good defense there by Kadlesic. 117 now to play in the opening quarter. Well, we have another flag on the play, and that's going to be an illegal Go chop lap out. against St. Vincent College. And so that will back them up. The penalty is accepted. That will back up St. Vincent to their own eight-yard line with 116 to play. Thompson from the shotgun. Three men in the backfield. Stasco has usually got the handoff on these plays and does so there as well. Carries it forward, trying to get back to the 10. And does. Gain of two on the play should set up a second down and 17. Gatis will check out of the game for St. Vincent. He's been dangerous so far today. Gatis has had an opportunity to throw some passes in addition to acting as a extra running back. Ariel Martinez comes in for him. He'll line up along the near side. Two receivers set to the left for Thompson. One to the right. Two in the backfield. A lot of interesting looks today. 
Thompson being pressured. He's back in the end zone. There's a flag thrown. That'll be a hold, and in all likelihood will go as a safety. We'll see if that occurred in the end zone as the pass goes incomplete. There was a hold, I believe, called in the end zone, and if that was in the end zone, it will be a safety. Let's see what the call is here. The referees will talk this over. It looks like they moved the flag out of the end zone to the one-yard line. Head coach Greg Debelak comes out on the field to ask where the penalty was. And I think what they're saying now is that that did occur outside of the end zone. Illegal block below the waist. Number six of the offense. Penalty will be declined. Resolve the play to third down. So the penalty is declined. The call is an illegal block below the waist. And that will bring up a third and long. Third down and 17. And I think... A pretty logical move to decline that one for Case Western Reserve there. Rather than just back them up an extra five yards, it's already a third and long. Take the play and take the incomplete pass. Crowd getting loud here at Case Western Reserve on homecoming Saturday. Gatiss, the man in motion for St. Vincent. Snap comes, looking to pass his Thompson over the middle. Good block. As Gatiss makes the catch, carries it forward to about the 19-yard line where he's taken down, and that should force a punt for St. Vincent. And he will come up about seven or eight yards short. Case Western Reserve University looks like we'll call the timeout here. And so the Spartans on a timeout will force the punt. We'll take a quick break here as well. Scoreless between Case Western Reserve and St. Vincent with, a, with 15 seconds remaining here in the quarter. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. St. Vincent ready to punt here with 15 seconds remaining in a scoreless game. And now St. Vincent calls a timeout. We'll stay with you here during the break for the timeout. After just coming out of commercial here. So Case Western Reserve here in the first half, first quarter I should say. Right now tied with St. Vincent. Not much offense right now for either team at the moment. Again, I think battling with the conditions a little bit. Case Western Reserve has been one of the best third down teams in the country so far this year. They're one of two so far today on third downs, but... As of right now, 63 yards for the Spartans. 55 passing. The eight rushing, but the, the eight rushing yards came on a fumble. So they'll look to do a little bit better here as with 15 seconds remaining. Now it appears, barring another timeout, St. Vincent will punt. This is Christian Witchy, short punt his first time. This one a little bit better, gets about to the 50 after a bounce. We'll roll on to the Case Western Reserve side of the field and be touched by, I believe, Tyler DeGrande at the 49-yard line, at the Case Western Reserve 49-yard line. And the Spartans offense will take the field, likely one play before the end of the first quarter. Let's see if the Spartans try to take a shot here. Nick Hall in the backfield for the first time today, joined there, I believe, by Kyle Tarkovsky, who's lined up horizontal to Saxton. No handoff, it'll be a pass. Saxton pressured, finds some room. He'll uncork one down the field. That will be Colt Morgan. Morgan catches it inside the 15, up to about the 11. And that will be the way the first quarter ends on a big bang for the Spartans. Colt Morgan with his second catch of the day. And Case Western Reserve will have the ball at the 13-yard line when we return. As Case Western Reserve University and St. Vincent 
our scoreless after a quarter here from DeSanto. That's Field. the end of the first quarter. We'll be back in just That's the end of the first quarter. Western Reserve Unit. Continental Ladies Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Winning three UAA championships and going to the NCAA playoffs each of the years. Head coach Greg Debelak and his staff were named the UAA coaching staff of the year and each of the three years, while Dan Whalen, Tom Brew, Bobby Bott, and Jeff Brown all received UAA player of the year honors during the stretch. The group has left an enduring legacy on the CWRU program and we are proud to have them back with us today to celebrate homecoming. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming back members of the Case Western Reserve University football teams from 2007, 2008, and 2009. And... And welcome back once again to the Santo Field. Congratulations to the 2007, 2008, and 2009 Case Western Reserve football teams who will be honored at the Hall of Fame banquet tonight with the University Award for Athletic Excellence. Meanwhile, Case Western Reserve driving Ryan Coolidge in at quarterback for the first time today. Coolidge takes the handoff. He'll throw on the run looking for the back corner just over the head of Joey Spitali, who is spread out wide. Well, let's see with Coolidge out there if he'll get a set of downs here. Not sure if something is wrong with Drew Saxton. We've seen earlier in the year situations where Coolidge has come into the game and has certainly piloted the offense. But for the last few games, it's been pretty much exclusively Saxton. That went over the middle. Pass caught by Luke DeFrancesco. He'll carry it forward on second down. Looks like he got to the nine-yard line. And so that will set up a third down and six. Still room for a first down for the Spartans here. Kyle Turkovsky comes back in to the backfield, the junior running back. Nick Zach Hall back there as well. It's Morgan spread out wide. DeFrancesco in motion to DeFrancesco's right is Spitali. Coolidge takes the snap. Looks, throws. It's DeFrancesco who makes the catch on the run. May have gotten a yard or two, but not much. And that will bring up a fourth down and three. And I believe Case Western Reserve will head out to attempt just their second field goal attempt of the season. So Robertson Albrecht out there to try to kick a field goal here. Albrecht one for one on field goal attempts this year. He's a perfect 30 of 30 on extra point attempts. This is a little bit longer than a normal extra point, but no problem there as Albrecht makes the kick and Case Western Reserve takes the lead here, three to nothing, the score. In the beginning of the second quarter. So Case Western Reserve scores on its opening drive of the second quarter as we get another look at our fans out there. On a cold, but what is quickly becoming a sunny day here at DeSanto Field. Again, a really good crowd for homecoming. Homecoming 2018, plenty of festivities on campus. The Hall of Fame induction ceremony will take place later today. That tonight at 5.30 will be joined by our Hall of Famers at halftime of today's game. And they will be out at midfield. Well, they'll be recognized in front of the game crowd here before the induction ceremony later. 
Three to nothing, Case Western Reserve leading, 13-34 to play in the game. Albrecht to kick it away after a successful field goal, the second of his career. Ball is taken at the 10 yard line. And returned up to about the 24 yard line by Shandon Marsden. And so St. Vincent will get the ball back after punting their last time. Thompson from the shotgun as he's been all day. Looks down at the sideline, checking the signals there. Eight on the play clock, takes the snap. Hand off to Stasco, carries it forward for maybe a yard or two. Now bring up second down. We'll call it two yards and the ball placed at the 26 yard line. Andrew Lease in the game for the first time today for Case Western Reserve, taking Ian Henderson's place under the nose tackle position. Thompson looking to pass, looking to go deep into the middle of no man's land, almost able to catch up to it though. Was number three, that's Aaron Austin. Almost was able to make that catch as we take another look on the deep pass. Crossy might have gotten turned around a little bit. I think he was watching Austin, who is to his left side, I was a little bit surprised when the pass came back towards the middle of the field. And so that will bring up another third down. St. Vincent, 40% on third down today, two of five on third down opportunities. Thompson takes the snap, looking to pass. He's pressured, Amadio can't get to him. Here comes the throw, middle of the field, over the head of Smith and caught on the play by Philip Harding at the 49 yard line of the Spartans. And that will be a first down. So big gain there on third and long. Fresh set of downs for Thompson to work with. And a flag thrown, that will be a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 65. Five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Timothy Barker, our referee today, making the call. So first down and 15 from their own 46 now. 13 on the play clock. Thompson steps back, five on the play clock. Takes the snap, hands off Stasco. Stasco carries it forward up to the 48 yard line. And it'll bring up a second down and 13. Case Western Reserve has done a good job for the most part controlling opposing teams running games this season. They allow 99.6 rushing yards per game, and that includes a big week last week against that defense for Washington and Jefferson. Besides that game, this has been a very tough defense to run against. Snap taken. Throw. Thompson scrambles. Spartans wanted a hold. Instead, it's thrown out of bounds. He was out of the pocket there. It'll go as an incomplete pass and bring up a third down and 13. Pressure applied by Jason Lockamy, the senior defensive end. The Spartans wanted the holding call there, didn't get the flag thrown. And so that will bring up a third down and 13 from the 48. Yeah. 
Thompson from the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands off, no pill throw. Looking over the middle, pass deep down the middle of the field, incomplete. Some contact there, but no flag thrown. That one was uncatchable anyway, I believe. And that will bring up a fourth down and 13 and likely a punt here for St. Vincent. Third punt of the game coming up here for Witchy. Mario Rabina back to receive for Case Western Reserve. And Rabina filling in for Justin Fan, both as a receiver and on punt returns today. Ball taken by Robina over his shoulder at the 12. He'll take it forward, carry to the 20, where he's swarmed by St. Vincent. Tyler DeGrande, who's played well on special teams today. With the tackle. In case Western Reserve will begin their possession on the 21-yard line with 10.50 to play in the half. 3-0 the score, Case Western Reserve leading. Drew Saxton back out there after Ryan Coolidge took a few snaps on the last drive. Resulting in a field goal. One back set, that's Kyle Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky comes even with Saxton. Saxton takes the snap. Looking deep, throws over the middle, and the pass is caught. That, I believe, was Robina over the middle. It was, who makes the catch for the first down. Big gain there for Robina and the Spartans. Well, Robina is quickly becoming one of Saxton's favorite targets. We saw Saxton throw him a number of times last week. And Mario Robina, really good hands out there. I was talking with Coach Debelak about him. He came from a wing T offense in high school. As Saxton pressured, he'll take off and run and now find some open space. And Saxton runs out of bounds. More on Robina here in just a sec, but what you see from Saxton there, Saxton is not a running quarterback, especially if you're a Case Western Reserve fan that is used to seeing someone like Rob Cuda run. That's not what Saxton does, but... He has a Ben Roethlisberger-like escapability, the ability to find a hole, to move a ta away from a tackle, to evade tackles, and we saw that perfectly there. First down and 10 from the 39, two big gains to start the drive for the Spartans on a long pass to Robina and a long run by Saxton. Tchaikovsky still in the backfield. Play action, the pass comes low to DeFrancesco and will go as incomplete, second down and 10 coming up. Back to Mario Robina now, and, and Coach Deblack was saying he was the kind of player who came out of a wing tee offense in high school, and so it's taken him a little bit of extra time to learn how to play in this case Western Reserve offense, but there's no doubt that that is a talented player and one who is certainly starting to make that talent show here over the course of the last few games, filling in for Justin Fan. Four wide now for Case Western Reserve, two to Saxton's left. Saxton takes the snap, throws near side, that's Colt Morgan. Morgan forward, past the 30, into about the 29-yard line. Third catch of the day for Morgan. Colt Morgan continues to pick up catches in bunches. He's over 50 yards for the game now on his three catches. Zach Hall checks into the backfield now. Two running backs set here. It'll be Tarkovsky and Hall. Spitali up high on your screen. DeFrancesco and Morgan on the near side. Tarkovsky in motion. Moves to Saxton's left. Hall now in motion moves to Saxton's right. Saxton takes the snap from the shotgun looking deep. He might have Morgan in the corner. The catch is made for the touchdown. What a grab by Colton Morgan, his 14th touchdown catch of the year. And the Spartans with their first score of the game now on top nine to nothing. We have to take another look at this one. And watch the toe tap on this one by Morgan in the corner of the end zone as he gets the one foot down. Boom. Touchdown Spartans. He is as good as they come at this level. Tall, fast, good hands. If you were to sketch out a wide receiver on paper, it'd look like Colton Morgan. Albrecht on the extra point might have 
gotten a piece of it, but it goes through anyway, and Albrecht extends the lead to 10 to nothing with 9.16 to play in the half. So Case Western Reserve with the lead. We'll take a quick break and be back. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook. A 29-yard pass from Drew Saxton to Cole Morgan gives Case Western Reserve a 10 to nothing lead. Robbie Albrecht set to kick off. Short kickoff there will be taken at the 10. And stopped. No, still going on the play. Before finally being chased out of bounds is Sam Nowicki. Nowicki carries forward. Let's see where they spot. It looks like it's about the 25-yard line. So Colt Morgan and Drew Saxton now continue to make that connection that the two have shown on the field. Very impressive play by the two of them. That's the fifth touchdown between the two over the last two weeks. Four last week, one so far this week. And for Morgan, that's his 14th of the season. He entered the week third among all Division III receivers in touchdown catches. And another one there. 10-0, Spartans lead. Throw in the flat. Ball is taken by Martinez, and he's finally pulled out of bounds at the 31. That'll bring up a second down and let's call it three. We'll call four on the board as the spot goes closer to the 30-yard line. So second down and four. Thompson has played well today, but no points to show for it so far. A couple drives that have stalled. Thompson looking to pass again. This one over the middle. Nice slant route there, and the pass is caught by Aaron Austin. And that will be a first down. Well, St. Vincent has been challenging the Case Western Reserve receivers all day. And so far, it's been a good job by St. Vincent. Again, putting pressure on two young cornerbacks out there, Nick Kadlesic and Colin Schuster. Schuster, the freshman, Kadlesic, just a sophomore. Another pass. Defense is coming. Thompson avoids the rush, comes out and slides at the 45-yard line. About five yards short of the first down, maybe six yards short of the first down. So they'll bring up a second down and six. Pressure's been there for Case Western Reserve in that defensive line. But Thompson has proven to be elusive. Sun's starting to peek out from behind the clouds. Fan base is in full throat today. Play action, pass comes, near sideline, out of bounds, and was he out of the tackle box on that? Let's see. Rolling on the field as the quarterback was outside of the pocket. The ball won't be on the line of scrimmage. No intentional grounding. So third no, down. So no intentional grounding there, as we get the thorough Number explanation. Three was also in the area. Third down. And we get an even more thorough explanation from Timothy Barker. So third down and six coming up for St. Vincent. Trying to answer back after the Spartans scored. A touchdown on their last drive. Thompson with four wide, two on each side. Running back is Stasco. Three 
Three on the shot on the play clock. Thompson takes the snap, pressure it, uncorks a pass to the near sideline. Coming over to try to get it was Keith Cow, but nowhere near him. As we take a look at our great crew here today that's been working the game, our videographers, Brian Trail. Keith Gibson doing the video replay that is so valuable. Great crew, the Media Vision squad headed up by Mike Becker. As the punt comes, Robina back to return. We'll let it go over his head. It will roll towards the end zone and get into the end zone. I think Robina played that right, but that ball took an awkward bounce. Unfortunately for Case Western Reserve, it results in a touchback. So with 6.45 to play in the half, Case Western Reserve leading 10 to nothing, trying to extend the lead. And goes a 55-yard punt, Saxton, with two receivers on each side. Throw over the middle, and it's batted away. Robina, the intended receiver. Cameron Mack, the safety, able to knock that one aside. Kyle Tchaikovsky was the lone running back in the backfield there. He'll stay in the game. As he plays up near the line, maybe more of an extra blocker here. Nick Hall checks in. One wide receiver to Saxton's right, two to his left. Those two to the left are DeFrancesco and Morgan. Handoff comes, it's Hall. He runs to the strong side and will get out of bounds just past the 25 at about the 26 yard line. So that will bring up a third down and four. Case Western Reserve trying to establish their running game. They've struggled with it a bit this year. Remember last year they had Jacob Burke who is one of the better running backs in program history. A little bit of a rework this season and a very different team. Overall, without Burke in there. To be fair, they haven't really needed the running game the way their passing game has worked. Saxton on third and four. Hall comes even with him in the backfield as the snap comes. Saxton looking, the pa pass rush comes and open over the middle comes Morgan and he'll take it all the way up to the 47 yard line for the first down. Tremendous, tremendous poise in the pocket shown by Saxton. And I think by him coming up, it pulled the defender up as well and allowed Morgan to come wide open and pick up a big gain. First down Spartans from the 47. Pass tipped and will fall short. Wide open along that side was Joey Spitali, the senior receiver. But the pass was tipped at the line. Spitali made a late attempt to try to get to it, but was unable to. Spitali, one of the senior co-captains on this team, a tremendous veteran presence on the squad. Saxton calling out plays to his receivers. Two tight on each side, Turkovsky in the backfield. Eight on the play clock. Saxton settles back. Now three on the play clock, snap comes. Fakes the handoff, goes near side Morgan. Morgan runs into the block, but still is able to carry it past the 50 out to the 47 yard line, where he'll be about four yards short of the first down marker and bring up a third down. Six catch of the day for Morgan, who's now up to 112 yards in the game, including the one touchdown catch, a 29 yard reception. 5.13 left in the opening half. Saxton needs four for the first down. He'll look along the side. There's Morgan again who gets the ball. Let's see where they give him forward progress to. It looks like he might have enough for the first down. 
They do spot it at the 42-yard line, and that will be a first down. So Colt Morgan picks up the first down. They'll move the chains. Four forty three left now. Saxton to throw. Looking deep over the middle. Robina tried the one handed Odell Beckham style grab there on a full extension, but couldn't quite pull it in. Rabina made a few catches like that last week and some really nice grabs against Washington and Jefferson. Rabina, the junior, getting more snaps on offense than he has in past years this year. Second and 10 coming up. 12 on the play clock as Saxton settles in. Now seven on the play clock. Might need to take a timeout here. Three to play on the three on the play clock. Saxton takes the snap quick. Throw comes. Morgan has it over the middle. Still on his feet. Avoids two defenders inside the 10. The five touchdown Colton Morgan. Touchdown Spartans. His school single season record tying. 15th touchdown of the season. And Case Western Reserve now takes a 16 to nothing lead over St. Vincent College. Six touchdowns in the last two weeks for Colton Morgan. 15 receiving touchdowns this season. And the Spartans now an extra point away from a 17 to nothing lead. Albrecht lines it up. Spitali the holder. Snap from Combs. Kick is up. And it is good. So Case Western Reserve with a 17 to nothing lead. That one a 42 yard touchdown pass. And how about the job from Colton Morgan getting through three defenders, snaking his way through and carrying it in for the touchdown. He is something else. So Case Western Reserve leading 17 to nothing. We'll take a quick break. Be back with you in just a minute. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Touchdown passes of 29 and 42 yards from Saxton to Morgan. Have the Spartans leading 17 to nothing here. Kick from Albrecht taken at the 8-yard line. Returned all the way up to the 28-yard line. Returned there by Sam Nowicki. And with 4.08 to play, St. Vincent trying to avoid a scoreless first half. Again, we invite you to stay with us at halftime as we'll have our Hall of Fame ceremony, or I should say our Hall of Fame recognition for the seven people going into the Spartan Club Hall of Fame tonight. St. Vincent, empty backfield, throw over the middle, pass caught. That's Kalp. Kalp takes it all the way up past the 45 to the 47. And with four minutes to play here, St. Vincent on one pass is threatening Case Western Reserve here. Ball's at the 47. Clock moving. Thompson from the shotgun. Now comes under center to give some instructions to his center. 
Dasko comes even now with Thompson. Thompson takes the snap. Thompson pressured again. Henderson coming up and the pass thrown and knocked out of the hands on a hard hit by Michael Amadio. Stasco, the intended receiver on the play, and Amadio put a lick on him. Again, Thompson avoiding pressure today, but that is all Michael Amadio there. Amadio, the sophomore linebacker, getting some extended playing time with Travis Johnston out, and he has made the most of it. Clock stopped with 3.21 remaining in the half. Second and 10 coming up from the 47-yard line. Six on the, on the play clock. Snap taken. Thompson throws underneath again. This is going to be caught by Nowicki, the wide receiver. Nowicki wrestled down at the 47-yard line. No gain on the play. And so it's a third and 10, and the clock continues to run. Well, you have to be careful here if you're St. Vincent. You can certainly take your time on this play, thinking that while you want to keep as much time as you possibly can on the clock for your drive, you also don't want to give Case Western Reserve too much time to work with if, they, if you're forced to punt here. Two thirty-four on the clock, five on the play clock, snap taken. Thompson drops back, and he will be brought down on the play. Well, the pressure has been coming all game, and this one finally comes to fruition for the Spartans. It's Jason Lockamy, and it looked like Andrew Lease on the play. Lockamy and Lease combining for the sack. And now a timeout will be called by Case Western Reserve. Timeout. Pardon me, an injured Injury. player on the field. After that, we will have a timeout, Case Western Reserve. And then the Spartans will call the timeout to stop the clock at 2.23. So we'll take another quick break here, 17 to nothing, Case Western Reserve. It appears the Spartans will get the ball back on a punt when we return. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brewell. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook. Welcome back to Case Western Reserve University on homecoming Saturday. As we see one of our young fans enjoying what is now sunshine out there today. Oh, the light's still on on the field. Injury on the field was to St. Vincent quarterback Xavion Thompson, the sophomore. Appeared to be a lower body injury and he will be helped off the field here. And I have to imagine, as we certainly wish the best for the young man, Str strategy-wise here, if you're St. Vincent, there's no doubt you're punting in this situation now. And as aggressive as Case Western Reserve is, if they can get any yards on this return, even if they don't get any, they'll probably be pretty aggressive to try to score on this final drive of the quarter here, final drive of the half. So Robina back to return. Witchy will be the punter. Witchy's, after a short first punt, has had two nicer punts since. Robina back. Witchy's punt, nice spiral punt will be taken at the 10 by Robina. Robina cutting along the outside. He'll take it up to the 20 and be tackled at the 23 by Micah Harris. And that is where the drive will begin for Case Western Reserve here with 2.13 remaining in the second quarter. 17 to nothing the lead, Spartans on top. Well, with the way the passing game has looked today, in particular the passing game with Drew Saxton and Colton Morgan, there is no reason why 
The Spartans shouldn't take their shots here. Morgan, eight receptions already in the first half, 161 yards and two touchdowns. Saxton back to take the snap. Saxton finds some space, finds an opening along the near side, and the pass just tipped away from Mario Rabine, who had a step on the defender, but Cameron Mack able to knock that one away and prevent what would have been a walk-in touchdown for Robina. Throw off the back foot there by Saxton. And again, if Robina catches that ball, he is walking into the end zone. But just got tipped away by Mack. So that'll bring up a second down and 10 from the 21. And Saxton avoids pressure, throws, and finds Morgan in the middle of the field. Morgan with some space to work. And he will get stood up by about four defenders at the 40. I thought forward, I thought forward progress, or you know, kind of the in the grasp call might have been called there with Saxton, but the play allowed to happen, and it's another big game. Quick snap from Saxton again. He's looking deep. Now fades to his right and throws off to the sideline. And we'll find Spitali there. Clock will run. And so the Spartans will have to hurry to the line with 135 left to play. It's a gain of six on the play. 130 left now. Snap comes back. Saxton takes it. Saxton troubled, but finds Morgan once again. His 10th reception of the game carries it forward all the way up to the 45-yard line of St. Vincent. And that will be a first down and pause the clock momentarily. So another big catch there for Cole Morgan. He's getting closer to that 200-yard mark. Throw over the middle and tipped away. And was it intercepted? It was not incomplete. Tipped away once again by by Mac, and it looked like Caleb Collins almost was able to pick that one off. 108 to play. It will be second down and 10 from the 45 yard line. Twelve on the play clock. Saxton puts the man in motion. That's Tarkovsky. Now sets, throws deep along the far sideline, and Spitali unable to make that catch. Good defense there by Leighton Quo. So that will bring up third and 10, 45 yard line would probably be four down territory here for the Spartans with the time on the clock and the place on the field. Case Western Reserve does have one timeout remaining. 10 seconds left on the play clock as the ball is snapped. Over the middle again and that's Morgan and he takes it out of bounds and that will be enough for the first down at the 34 yard line. Cole Morgan with his 10th catch of the game. 57 seconds left now. 10 catches in the first half for Morgan. The school record for receptions in a game is 15. It's been done three times, pardon me, twice. Once by Justin Fan. Once by Jason Salura. Saxton looking to throw again. Now he'll take off. Lots of room on that side of the field. He'll run that past the first down marker before he's finally wrestled down in bounds, but it's a first down at the 18-yard line. So first and 10 from the 18. Clock is moving. Not a lot of urgency here for the Spartans. Now Saxton will settle over the ball, directs traffic in the backfield. And we get a timeout called. It 
believe, taken by the Spartans. No, they'll call up the timeout St. Vincent. So head coach Ron Dulciato must not have liked something that he saw. Timeout, St. Vincent. Yep. Second charge timeout of the half. And so, with 32 seconds remaining here in the first half, a timeout called by St. Vincent. Case Western Reserve driving again. And again for Drew Saxton today, 16 of 23, 257 yards, two touchdowns. For Colt Morgan, nine receptions, pardon me, 10 receptions now. I believe he's at 190 yards and two touchdowns. Right about where he was receiving wise last week when he had his career day. Big day for the Spartans offense. A big quarter for the Spartans offense. Remember, this was a scoreless game after the first quarter. A chance to add on here. 17 points scored so far here in the second. Saxton takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Now looks to throw. Pressure comes. Looks into the corner. There was nobody there. And I wouldn't be shocked if that was called intentional grounding. Let's see if they say if he was out of the tackle box. Yeah, no flag there, so that's going to be an incomplete pass, second and 10. 26 seconds left now. Two wide receivers left, one right, two running backs. Saxton takes the snap, throws on the run, caught Spitali into the end zone. Touchdown, Joey Spitali, touchdown Spartans. Third passing touchdown of the game for Drew Saxton. Spitali catches his second touchdown of the year, and it's now 23 to nothing. Robertson Albrecht looking to add on to the lead here with the extra point. Kick comes. And it is good. 24 points scored here in the second quarter for Case Western Reserve. We'll have a kickoff coming up here in just a minute when we return. An extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu? Table 45, restaurant and bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at TBR. 45.com or on Facebook. Welcome back to Homecoming at DeSanto Field. It's all Spartan so far today, 24 to nothing. All 24 points scored here in the second quarter. The latest coming on a touchdown pass from Saxton to Spitali. And now Robertson Albrecht set to kick this one away. 21 seconds remain, and I'd be shocked, barring a good return, if St. Vincent does anything other than kneel on the ball. Here comes the return to the near side. And out of bounds goes Marsden. Well, let's see what the game plan is here for St. Vincent. Keep in mind, it looks like Thompson may be done for the day. And we'll see who comes out to play quarterback for St. Vincent. It appears that we will see Michael Navarro here. So Navarro in a quarterback. But it also no, it looks like Navarro will head back to the sideline. We'll just get the kneel down here. That is Navarro who takes it. And that will end the first half. So Case Western Reserve with a big second quarter. Two touchdown catches for Colt Morgan. One for Joey Spitali. 200 receiving yards in the first half for Colton Morgan. And Case Western Reserve leads 24 to nothing at the half. 